Hi, this is Brian from The Vintage Type, and what I have for you today is an Oliver Number no. 7 that I'm selling. I hadn't intended on selling it, but I have too many of these things. I like them all, but uh, don't have enough room for everything. So this has gone through the process that I go through when I get a machine. I take it apart, all the major components, uh, clean, adjust, and oil, and reassemble, and it works pretty well. I don't actually know the history on this machine, but it, I could just envision it in a newsroom or a train station or something like that, giving it a little bit of a yellow tint. It uh, just has a neat patina. I've gone through and I've cleaned everything. It has a neat look to it. The only wear is on the S, and it's right up by the dollar sign. That's a little light. But all the other keys show up really well. The F and the G have a little bit different symbol on top. The F has a one quarter and the G has a half. So it's a little bit different keyboard. The space bar is in good shape. And on the seven, they had things a little different. Although the body looks a lot like a nine, the left margin key is up here on a nine. And for some reason they moved it down here. And then uh, with that, there is only a shift keys on one side. Now under here, on a number seven, and if you're missing these ribbon tin covers, this is only for this, uh, this style. It's for these two years. And it's flat like a uh, five, but it has this little dome. And I have another, I have a five for comparison. It looks very similar but the diameter is different and the five cover can fit inside of the seven so the diameter on these is larger it matches pretty closely this is one from a nine and you'll see the difference so this is flat and this has a little bit of a dome to it plus it also has this little finial and these are the same diameter so if you have a seven without these covers. You can use a 9 uh, cover from a 9. It just uh, will have this little finial and it won't be flat, so it won't be absolutely correct, but it'll keep you from having these little open ribbons. doesn't hurt them, it just doesn't look quite as nice. And then inside, it's different as well. It has this little spool, which I haven't remade yet. I'm, I'm uh, working on making more of these. There is a, another hexagon piece that this slides over, so it'll go like that. This, there's this little piece of uh, spring on the inside of here, and you'll take the ribbon and stretch it across there, and then slide it in between the, the spring and this piece here, and that holds it, and then you just wind it up um, like that. And this is what all the rest of them look like. This is a wood spool with a clip, and that's what the, that's in comparison. This is the one for the seven, and this is the one for pretty much everything else. So that's a few of the differences on a seven. And let me take this off of here so you can get a better look. They also have this little design here. The paper fingers are a little different. And what they'll do is actually, I saw a little advertisement where a guy had taken the card, a uh, like a business card, so if you're gonna type on a business card or maybe an index card if you were a librarian or something, so you'd feed it in here and the, the two fingers, when you'd put it close together, would hold that. And I think this bar is actually to put tension. When you put it all the way in, it puts a little more tension on these fingers. I, I'm not sure, but I think that's what that's for. And you'll notice, since I have this off, the decals on this, even though the paint isn't perfect, the decals are really, they have a lot of gold to them. They're really dark and they're really pretty. And the nickel looks good. The, um, the platen is original and it's got a lot of grooves to it. Um, but I didn't want to replace it because it has that really pretty uh, blue to it. And if you're not typing a lot, it's more of a, a showpiece and you just, uh, uh, I like to say a, more a, a note than a novel type of machine at this point. Uh, I like to leave them just as they are instead of refinishing them. Now if you're going to type all the time it might be a good idea to talk to JJ Short or whoever uh, can redo your platens. 
but the machine looks pretty good. The nickel, there's a little bit of wear up here, but the other side looks good, and it's all been uh, taken apart and redone. Now, it does have a little bit of, a friend of mine calls it honest wear, and that's a lot up here where somebody maybe had rested their hands when they were thinking or just uh, brushed it a lot right up here. And it's a little bit flat right here. Maybe it got dusty for a while and dulled the paint. And a little bit of alligatoring back here. Uh, the patent tags look great. Um, the nickel on the bell is a little dull, but it shows up pretty nice. It has a new uh, draw cord and clip and I put um, I did it about a month and a half ago and when I did it I put a new ribbon on it has of course the pencil holder and that's all in one piece it looks good there's a little bit of wear actually a lot of wear on the backspacer for some reason so I don't know if somebody did a lot of tabbing or something where they had to back up and redo something but quite a bit of wear on that but all in all it's a really nice machine it types great it just kind of looks cool. It doesn't look new, but uh, like I say, I don't really like the word, but it has a great uh, patina to it. The slightly yellow keys match uh, the rest of the look in the machine, and it just has a, has a neat look to it. Uh, like I say, what I would think of is in an old newsroom. Shut the camera off here for a second. I'll put it back together and we'll do a type test. Okay, you can see it's fairly well aligned. The, well, I put the paper in a little crooked, but the type is well aligned and the uh, type slugs have been cleaned, so it looks pretty good. All right, I'll, I'll put it up, this little guy up for sale this week. It'll be on eBay. And good luck if you'd like to bid on it. Thanks for watching.